today I'd like to take a moment to revisit uh, one of the topics we brought up earlier. When we started off with our method of joints, I gave you an example of me walking down the sidewalk and there being a telephone line ahead of me and we had to identify what some of the forces were acting at the joint or acting at the joints so that we could see how much tension was in the cable, how much probably compression was in the um, in the telephone pole, that type of thing. And I use that as a segue to look at the method of joints within truss calculations. Now I'd like to revisit this because there's something a little bit shifty going on. And the shifty thing is now that we know what trusses are, we know how they act, this setup that I have does not qualify as a truss. There's uh, the obvious thing where there's not all triangles, so that kind of awakens your suspicion. But more than that, there's a member here that is not a simple two-force member. Look at the telephone pole. The telephone pole does not have only two forces applying on it. In fact, let's go ahead and draw a free body, well, let's see, we haven't used red. Let's draw a free body diagram of the telephone pole. We have the telephone pole here, and we're going to have a, uh, what do we use, we use teal here, force, tension in the wire. Now I know that this isn't going to be completely horizontal, there's going to be some angle to it, but for the purposes of everything we're doing today, let's pretend that it's horizontal. Then I have some sort of force at the end of the um, telephone pole due to the cable. Great, great. And you're crafty enough that you know that a telephone is attached to the ground and that ground is going to apply some sort of force. The obvious force that is being applied at the ground is going to be force the force going up. In addition, there may be a force preventing it from going sideways. And um, depending how things are looking, if say something, depending how things are set up, there may also be a moment applied. It could be a cantilever beam. Now, generally, telephone poles are created to not be like that. The last thing you want is something bending in earth. Um, it's just not equipped for that. But we'll put it on there just because we're not sure what's going to happen. However, there's another force happening here. The other force that's happening is from the cross member. That cross member is going to apply some sort of force in the middle of in the middle of the telephone pole. This can no longer qualify as a truss. We call these types of setups frames. Now in a frame, the good news is what we need to do is pretty simple. We simply draw a free body diagram and we think carefully about it, making sure that um, actually I, I like the free body diagram I drew here. We think carefully about it and try and solve. Now let's say that we were given we were given the tension. From that we're able to find the cable compression. From that, remember we went to this free body diagram, we're able to find the F, I think we called it FS, yeah there it is, FS right here. We're able to find this force now we have three of these forces. I'm going to give you the fact that the moment is going to be zero. From those three forces, you can deduce, you can figure out what this force is and what this force is. Same rules we followed before, we simply put everything into a free body diagram and we solve accordingly. Some of the things you may see while you're solving for frames is they might take this cable and they might say, we want a free body diagram for all members. So here you go. For FC, there's a free body diagram. Or for this cable right here, we just draw the cable. There it is. There it is. Now one thing that I want to note with frames, something you might see that you need to be careful of, is um, a reminder that you always want to balance some of your forces is going to be zero because this is statics and the sum of the torques is equal to zero. That means in practicality if you have a member and you have one 
force acting in this direction, a second force acting in this direction, then you're going to need to have some sort of moment counteracting that to keep the thing from spinning really. Those are the basic rules of members. They're simply just like trusses except we have three force or four force or five force items and many times we'll be expected to uh, evaluate them member by member. All the stuff you've learned thus far, all the rules you've used, they apply here as well. Thank you and I hope this helps you out.